Hello again. Today's video is about something very close to my heart indeed, and it's this. This is the LPCO AC88 PA amplifier. This was made by Lee Electronics in London, and they first started making them in 1963, which is more or less where this one is from. And I know that because this is a point-to-point -point and tag board designed and built amplifier. They made some later on, from about 1966 onwards, they had printed circuit boards inside. And they also made these for another company called Sound City, who I'm sure many of you know very well. But it was called the Sound City Studio 20. But it was the same amp, but the PCB version. This is the original. Now, what makes this special, really, is two things. For me personally, this was the first valve amplifier I ever owned. My father bought me one in about 1988 and I had it through school. I did my first school concert with it and I absolutely loved it. However, as you do, I ended up selling it because I'd bought bigger and louder amplifiers thinking big is best. Not always the case, particularly with guitar tones. And eventually, about 10 years ago, I was able to pick one of these up off eBay. And in fact, I had two. I had the PCB version as well, which I later sold, but I kept hold of this one. Now, I kind of thought to myself, I would still like to have a good 15, 20 watt valve amp that I could gig with. And if you're gonna buy something like that, you could buy one of the sort of more modern Marshall 20 watt amps, or you could pick up a, a hand-wired 1974 head, but they cost a lot of money. And I thought, well, I've got the El Pico. Why can't I use it? And the main reason that I wasn't using it is just it hadn't been restored. The capacitors that were inside it were mostly there from the 60s. It still has nearly all the original mullard tubes inside it, or valves, I should say, if you're English. And I thought, well, there can't be a lot to this, can there? So what I've done is I've made my new video where I show you what I've done to get this to being a gig ready amp. Now, this isn't a restoration video. I'm not restoring it to like it was when it was new. It's an amplifier, it's a tool, and I'm gonna rewire certain aspects of it to be gig ready. I'll just remove the jack and you can see this is actually a PA amplifier. It has two microphone inputs and it has an auxiliary input on the third, labeled here as gram, radio and tape. And also on this amplifier, if I turn the camera, you've got a bass and treble control. And if I tilt down, you've got two speaker outputs. Now, if you read up on these, it's been said that the Beatles used these amplifiers as PA amps back in the early days. That I'm not 100% sure on because I've never seen any photographic evidence. And if anybody does, please leave a comment. However, this amp was made in 1963, and by that point, the Beatles had already become a fairly big name. So I would suspect they probably weren't carrying these around or carrying around their own PA systems when they were touring the UK. However, this amplifier was considered state of the art for 1963 with its almost art deco design. Well, this is the rear view of the amplifier. These are the speaker taps. In essence, you can set the jacks to either three ohm or 15 ohm, and you can have a mixture of both. So one speaker output can be 15, the other can be three, or you can set them both to three or both to 15. At the moment, I've got it set to both to three because I'll be using a four or an eight ohm cabinet with this amp. Sadly, some of the writing has wiped off on this amp, but being that it's nearly 60 years old, that's hardly surprising. You also have a variable input voltage selector on the back. This isn't unusual for the time. And hidden just down here is the mains input fuse. Now, this is something I don't like at all. And when I fully restore this amp, that will be gone. And I will replace the mains cable with an IEC main socket with built-in fuse holder. I won't be showing that in this video because it hasn't arrived yet. I also think I might well put a blanking panel over this hole as well so that you cannot get access to the voltage selection controller. One very, very important thing with this video. Inside these amps are a lot of very, very dangerous high voltages. This is the sort of stuff you do not touch if you don't know what you're doing. I've spent over 30 years of my life 
knowing about amps and stuff. I studied electronics at college. My dad was an electrician. I worked for the BBC as an engineer for 10 years. Amps like this, you've got 400 volts whizzing around. You keep your fingers well away when you're working on these things, when you're testing them. You know, you use your voltmeter and you check, you check, and you check before you make connections, wiring things in to make. Because if you get something wrong, you know, you could have a fire on your hands. So this video is not for people that are amateurs to this. This is for people that are interested in amplifiers, have a knowledge of how they work, and I'm just showing you what I've done to this amp. So hope you enjoy the video. Here's our two EL84 output valves, and here's our output transformer. Interestingly, it's physically not that much bigger than the amp that I put in that champ that I built a little while ago, um, even though it's taking effectively double the amount of uh, power. And on this side of the amp, we've got three ECC83 input valves. This gives us a better view of what's inside. There's our bass and treble controls, and you can see there's a, a tone circuit built in there. We then have the volumes, and there's various resistors wired in before they hit the preamp stage. So all of this wiring here looks to be pretty good. And because this amp I know does work, and I haven't had any problems with e any of the pots or any of the input stage, all of that I'm gonna leave well alone, even the tone circuit, because the tone circuit sounds nice. Looking at the back panel from the inside, we can see there's plenty of space here. So I think I will mount the IEC main socket there. If we look at the actual amplifier, you can see there's a tag board here, which has got various capacitors and resistors mounted. But then we've also got some point-to-point -point wiring going on to uh, different parts of the amp, different grounding points. Uh, there's a couple of uh, high gain resist, high power resistors, one there. I think there's another one somewhere as well. Can I see it? Oh, that one there. And we've got some various capacitors here that may need replacing. Other than that, though, I think the amp's, uh, I think the amp's pretty good. i uh, not sure about these capacitors here. Um, they might need looking at as well. But I'm a little bit concerned about these, these old plessies because I, I don't know how, uh, how good they are. But they can, they can easily be replaced with something a bit more modern. And same with this, this electrolytic here. The first thing I'm going to look at then is this capacitor here. Now this is a, this, in this can there's effectively two 50 microfarad capacitors at 350 volts. The nearest value you can get is 47 microfarad and I've got two here that are 47 microfarad at 450 volts. Across here is a 4.7 ohm resistor, which I think is 2 watts. Now, I don't have any 2 watt resistors at that value. However, what I've done is I've got these two resistors here. One is listed as 10 ohm and the other is listed at 9 ohm. However, if I click connect them together on the meter, you can see that I've got 4.66K. So that should be fine to go in there to make up for the 4.7K that's in there. Although that resistor I think is probably a little bit out of spec anyway. How I'm going to mount all of this is on this here. This is just a tag board which will be screwed into the cabinet. I would guess round about here. I'll put a little screw in. Or I might even move it further back. Now I probably will have it about here and then the capacitors will be mounted there and then these wires will be wired to the board. Well this is what I've built anyway. The ground is in the middle and it also will go to the chassis ground um, but the, the other chassis ground lug is only a few centimetres away so it's not going to induce any extra noise or anything. We've got the two capacitors here. We've got our homemade 4.7k resistor there and in theory, that should just slot into place and uh, we should be good. Now I have to say this sort of thing does indeed terrify me because if I make a mistake, 
putting this in place, then I kind of messed up the amp really. Okay, it's got to be said, that was a little bit nerve wracking having not done this for a while. But now we have this tag strip in place. We now have the two new capacitors in there, both at 450 volts. So they're a higher voltage than the originals. But what I will do now is I will very quickly do a quick test and I just want to make sure the amp still works. Okay, things are progressing quite well. This is the second capacitor board that I've built. Again, I've had to use mixed value resistors to make up the, the value that I needed. Um, but anyway, I've now got two resistors there to give me near enough 4.7K. And I've got two 33 microfarad 450 volt electrolytic capacitors. Um, I've also done a few other little things on the app. I'm just going to show you that now as well. Okay, I'm sorry I've got it up vertically, just how it is at the moment. Um, up here, there's these electrolytics here that I've now changed. I'm waiting for these um, coupling capacitors to arrive. And if I tilt the camera down a bit, you can see that's the first capacitor board I put in. And I've also changed this capacitor here as well. Now, this board here, I'm going to mount about there and then I will wire this out to here. It will mean I've got to extend a couple of resistors with wire, but I will do that and heat shrink it, and uh, hopefully that will uh, all still work and hopefully have a bit less hum than what the, what the amp had before. I know amp purists will say, oh no, you don't want to do it like that, you want to do it like this, but this is how I've done it. These two resistors here went to this side of the capacitor, so I've joined them together and I then also join them with a piece of tin copper wire. I then added this piece of rubber sleeving and I then put some heat shrink over the top so that is all completely covered. That's then sided to the plus, soldered rather to the plus side of this capacitor. The ground of this capacitor is on this grounding line here. This is the ground that went to the capacitor which I've wired to here. I did the same thing on this side except there were three resistors going to this side of the capacitor. So this resistor I've brought in this way. These two, again, I've soldered the ends together along with a piece of tin copper wire. I then put some rubber sleeving on. I then heat shrunk it there and soldered it here. So all these wires are completely separate. They're insulated and all being well, that should be a good repair. I know the, you know, the authentic repairers and the radio restorers would take out that capacitor they then drill out the inside, put these capacitors inside and then resolder it. But I kind of think life's too short. And if these capacitors ever need replacing again in the future, which they probably will do, it's going to be a lot easier just to snip them out and solder two more capacitors straight in. These are the original coupling capacitors. They're 0.1 microfarad or 10 nanofarads. And they're rated at 400 volts. And they did look a bit the worse for wear. And one of the ones I actually took out was cracked, which I think was where a lot of my noise problems were coming from. These are high rated, these are 400 volt, but these are 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarads. And from everywhere I read, this seems to be the de facto standard value for using as coupling capacitors in valve amplifiers. Looking at the chassis now, you can see I've replaced them here, 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 and here. And I've given the amp a quick test and all the hum and buzz and noise I was getting has all gone. And it's a very clear amp with a great crunchy tone. And even though uh, channel one isn't working properly, and I think that's just down to it being an iffy valve, I'm actually going to take this amp and play it live tonight because I think this is what amps are meant for. They're meant to be played. So uh, I'm looking forward to using it tonight.
Okay, a couple of days have passed since the last update I gave on this, but I just thought I'd show you a couple more things. I changed a couple more capacitors here. Um, I didn't have quite the right values, so I just made some up out of the um, 0.1 microfarads here. I wanted 4.7 here, or 0.047, so uh, I got a 1 and put them in series. And here I wanted a 0.2, so I put those in parallel. So uh, they're all good. They have, I think, improved things a little bit. Um, as we work along, I'll just update. So there's our one set of uh, filter caps, and there's our other set. And yeah, everything there is looking good. If we look at these three ECC83 valves, this one here I've replaced because I did have one faulty valve. The other thing I was getting, I was getting a little bit of intermittent crackle. And what I ended up doing was I took out the fending valve, which was this one, which is the phase splitter. I then got some, got a toothbrush like that, in fact, that very toothbrush, and put contact cleaner on it and I cleaned everything inside here. And I also cleaned the pins on the valve with my fiberglass pencil. And uh, anyway, that's all come good. It now doesn't crackle, doesn't wobble. If you can, you can wobble it while it's on and it's fine. It's absolutely rock solid. So I'm pretty happy now with this amp and it sounds great and uh, yeah, really good. The last thing to do, which I haven't done yet because I haven't had one arrive in the post, is I will get rid of this horrible fuse holder. Well, I'll, I'll disconnect it, I probably won't remove it, we'll just disconnect it. And in the back here, I'm gonna cut a hole and I'm going to mount an IEC mains connector with a fuse attached to it. So the fuse will be, you can change it from the back there and it'll be nice and neat, no flying mains cable. And yeah, it'll be a great gigging amp as I showed you on the video um, that I did on Wednesday. This amp just sounds cooking and I love it. Now some are going to say sacrilege and these do. this does have original mullard valves and there's a mullard EZ81 and you can just about make out in the background those are mullard EL84s. Because I intend to use this amp to play live I don't want to use old valves in it. I'd rather have a brand new set of valves in and know that it's going to be reliable so all these valves are going to come out. Mm -hmm. 